they cannot um, they are they will be late for this exam for this like lecture. Okay, so chapter two is about managerial cost concepts and the cost of behavior analysis. Uh, there are three, uh, sorry, there are five learning objectives. The first one is about, we want to learn the three classes of manufacturing cost, okay? And if you have read the, the chapter book, right, you have learned that it's about direct material, direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead, okay? And you will be able to uh, tell the difference between the product cost and the period cost. What is the difference between the two? And the second learning objectives is about the uh, cost of behavior. So when we talk about cost, is this a, a variable cost, a fixed cost, or maybe a mixed cost, right? And the, the uh, third uh, learning objectives uh, is to apply the high-low method to determine the component of mixed, mixed cost. So um, a portion of number two, number three, I will cover uh, on September 28th, after we finish the chapter three, okay? So I'm going to cover a little bit, but some portion of that will be covered just one, on one class uh, because we are going to use some Excel to practice. And uh, the fourth point, um, demonstrate how to calculate the cost of goods manufactured and the prepare financial statement for manufacture. So you have learned the 2100, right? And you have seen some, what the financial statement look like, um, the basic ones, right? Um, so basically we want to know, right? For the manufacturing companies, how to calculate the cost of goods manufactured, right? In 2100, you have learned how to calculate cost of goods sold, right? Cost of goods sold. And here is a kind of a new concept, cost of good manufactured, okay? And the last one is about uh, apply regression analysis to determine the component of mixed uh, cost. Again, this one, uh, we are going to use Excel. I'm gonna show you uh, some of the uh, examples. So we're gonna do it on September 28th. Okay, so for the company, okay, in order for them effectively plan direct control operations, the manager will need to rely on cost information. Okay. So for example, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Very important question. What costs are involved in making a product or service, right? You are in the business, right? You better know your cost, right? So Lego, right? My, I have two boys, right? They were a big fan for Lego, okay? And uh, for those of you who are parents, uh, you have little ones at home, I'm sure that you know Lego, right? And, and you know how expensive Lego are, right? So the question makes you wonder, right? If you just look at Lego, what, what is the cost for these Legos, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you. Okay, so in this, in this video, right, uh, you have seen, okay, you have seen how the, the Lego pieces were made. Okay, so when you think about the cost, right, when you think about the cost of Lego, and you have read a textbook, right, give me some, um, some observations, what would, the what would be part of the cost, right, for the Lego? The raw materials. Yeah, the raw materials, and it's called ABS, right? It's uh, quite a special type of materials. It's quite hard and it's shining, right? And it lasts really long, right? Uh, so very good. So that, that's the, do you think that's the direct materials? I do. Okay, good. Okay, what else? Think about the direct cost. labor? The labor? Which part of yeah. it do you see the labor? Which part of the labor? Indirect labor. Yeah, direct direct labor. labor. So in the video, which part of it do you see the direct labor? I was gonna say indirect labor, like in terms oh. of like maintenance. And oh, indirect like labor. Management, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you are saying that the machine, there are people who are maintaining the machine, right? The, the robots, right? Yeah, that's, that's very good, right? Because 
um, you can you can see this production line is is very highly auto automated, right? So and the machine has to be maintained, right? Be kept in good condition. So uh, so sorry, what's your name? I, I, I can't see the name. I'm sorry. So uh, so yeah. So it, you you have some workers try to maintain all the robots working properly. Those work, those labor are product cost because it's relevant to making these Lego pieces, right? But it's not a direct labor, right? It's not a direct labor. Um, so the indirect labor, it, it, it is called, what's the three component? The indirect labor. Manufacturing overhead. Yeah, very good. Manufacturing overhead, right? Because we have three component, direct materials, that's the ABS, right? Those are, uh, you know, solid, clear, those, uh, uh, those materials, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have seen this uh, indirect labor, right? Uh, very right, right? There are people, um, staffs, work, workers maintaining the machines working. Uh, did you see any uh, direct labor, uh, Dan? Dan Pearson? Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking about. Is there people, there's probably people in the building watching the machines work or set the settings and set the amounts. So wouldn't those guys be direct labor? Mm -hmm. So did you did you see there was a, one lady? He she was putting the cats right. The uh, before they print the face, there was one person. He was manually put the cat into those uh, base, and that base will go be printed. Did you see that part? So that person, that staff, um, that's a direct labor, right? He is directly working on the on 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 the on the product, right? On the on the operation line. Michaela? Would, I know this wasn't really shown in the video, but would the people that have to load it onto the trucks and then drive it to the stores and unload it, is that also direct labor technically, even though they're not manufacturing, they're just delivering? Okay, that's a very good question. So when we talk about um, the product cost, right? When we say direct materials, direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead, we are, we are saying this, this are the product cost, right? So the product costs are the cost directly related to the production, right? The production. So you are talking about the driver, right? The loader, okay? They are loading the finished product, right? They are just moving the product from one location to the other, okay? They are not manufacturing the product, right? So they are not manufacturing the product. They are just moving the finished product from one location to another. So therefore, the cost, the salaries paid to the loaders are not product cost. And what kind of cost do we call it? If it's not a product period. cost. Period cost. Period cost, very good, period cost, yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, I see some information. Yeah, okay. Um, also, one more cost that I noticed, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, there would be depreciation on those machines and uh, that would be a manufacturing overhead. Very good, very good, right? You can see that, um, you know, this whole production line, right? These machines, right? And there are, you know, in 2100, you learn about depreciation, right? These machines cannot, cannot work forever, right? So they have a useful life, regardless how many years they can be used, right? So then every year you are manufacturing these Legos, right? You want to recognize the depreciation, right? And these machines are directly manufacturing this, uh, this product, right? So therefore this cost, the depreciation cost are uh, product cost, okay? But is this cost a direct material? No, it's not a material. Is it a direct labor? No, it's not a human being. So it is a manufacturing overhead, okay? Okay, now I want to ask you if you observed any indirect materials, any indirect materials. Um. Like um, cost of lubricants for the machines as the work? 
uh, pardon me, can you say that again? Indirect material. As an indirect material could be like cost of lubricants to keep the machines going. Okay, very good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Anyone else have? Uh, uh, so, uh, so who is this? You know, I, I don't know why I cannot see your name. I'm so sorry. So okay. if you raise your hand, go ahead, <laughs> uh, Megan, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, like, um, the hoses and stuff that would need to be replaced on the machinery. Okay. Yeah. Did you notice anything that are part of the product that are immaterial, but it's indirect materials? Are you talking uh, about stickers? And? Are you talking about stickers? Yeah. Did you, did you notice that face, printing? Right? Did you notice the printing, right? So every time, you know, they printed eyes, right? And they, they're gonna use some paint, right? So how insignificant that paint to that uh, Lego, right? Okay, so that would be, in, to, my, to me, that paint, right, to make the face, that would be a indirect materials, right? You, it's just a too in, insignificant that you cannot directly trace the amount or the cost, right, on that. Even if you, you can calculate the cost, it will be very low relatively to the uh, other materials, right? The other overhead. So we talked about direct materials, indirect materials, direct labor, indirect labor, okay? And we even talked about depreciation of the plant, the equipment. So that's very good, okay? Very good. So I think that covers, cool. yeah, go ahead. I would like to ask one question. Yeah. Uh, as we are saying that uh, the indirect uh, cost of uh, indirect material is the, the paint on the face, printing on the face. So how would we know how much amount is going to be the direct cost or indirect cost for the material in the oh. cases of paint? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we don't have uh, like a, we don't have a, 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 a amount of threshold, right? So basically the idea is that's the cost of keeping trace of the, that uh, indirect materials justify the benefit. If it does not, then it, you have a good reason to consider that to be indirect materials, right? So if I know the Lego materials cost, uh, let's say $1, if the, the, if the paint only cost one cent, right? It's, it just doesn't make sense for me to spend the time to, to uh, Consider that one sense, right? So therefore, you just treat it as indirect indirect materials. So the indirect materials are the materials you used, but not significant, right? And uh, you know it's not worthy to trace it to that product. Sometimes you can trace it, right? But in other case, maybe you have let's say one liter of ink, you can use like like ten thousand pieces, right? And yeah, you can definitely work out on a number, how much per uh, piece, but is that number really significant? If not, then this is just considered as a manufacturing overhead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Do you like that movie, that, that video? <laughs> so that's a manufacturer that is highly automated, right? We can imagine if we send hundreds of people, right? Try to assemble all these things, right? So in that case, uh, you know, that machine, right? The depreciation of the machine would be a major component of the cost, right? It's gonna cost a lot of money to set it up, right? And uh, maybe the direct materials, right? That, that would be a major cost. Mm, okay. And uh, so there are very little direct labor, right? There are very, very minimum direct labor. Right? We don't see people that are working, right? It's all machines, right? Okay, so now I'm going to show you another manufacturer. That's the cheese, how to make cheese. Does anyone know how to make cheese? No. No, okay, no, let, let's learn how to make a cheese. <laughs> Have a, a cheese here. Uh, can you tell me, that lady, she mentioned some key words that I want you to hear at least two times, right? What is the key word about this 
this this production. Okay, so Michaela, um, how labor intensive it yeah, was. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's the one. That's exactly why I want to use this video as an alternative to the uh, to the uh, Lego. For the Lego production, there's almost no direct labor. But in this video, boy, you see, right? People just working, working, working all the time, right? So direct labor um, is a, a major component for the, the cost, right? For the uh, for making the cheese. What else? Can you, can anyone comment about if you are the boss of the uh, the factory, right? You you want to think about that? Okay, what are, what are my costs, right? So then you think about the direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturer overhead. Can anyone give me some? Thoughts when, after you watch the video? Uh, maybe I have. <laughs> Anna, go ahead. Uh, maybe the gloves they are wearing, it's a part uh, of uh, indirect materials because you need them to uh, prepare all this uh, cheese. You said, uh, sorry, you said what is uh, the indirect material? Gloves. Uh, gloves. Gloves. So it's blue okay. gloves. Oh, so you are saying the workers are wearing gloves? Yeah. Okay, when they are preparing, that's the indirect materials? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay, so I think I understand what you are saying, um, but I'm just trying to think about um, when you say the indirect materials, it's probably something part of the product. So we want to leave the gloves in, in, in the cheese, right? So I think when we're thinking about indirect materials, we are most thinking about like the packaging, right? In the end, you see, uh, there's one person he was using the, the, the cardboard to package that cheese, right? So maybe that would be considered as the indirect material, right? Because it is part of that product, right? You sell cheese in that box, right? Um, so maybe that would be the uh, indirect materials. So the I think, you, that's a good point. The, the glove would be a manufacturing, um, okay, let me think, indirect materials. Yes, to me, I, I always think about the indirect materials, all direct materials will be part of the product, okay? That's how I think of it. Uh, so the fact that we are not leaving the gloves in the cheese, okay? So I probably will disagree with you. Yeah, but good try. Uh, so it's a manufacturing overhead? Yeah, it's, it's definitely manufacturing overhead because if the government's policy is that you, have, you can't use your bare hand to work on the cheese, right? For hygiene purpose. So therefore, in order to make the cheese, you have to wear gloves, right? So wearing the gloves is necessary for you to make the cheese. Therefore, it's a product cost. The, the, the gloves definitely a product cost. So okay. yeah, indirect materials. It could be some of the consumptions, but uh, yeah, it, it just, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's definitely manufacturing overhead. Yeah, because it's part of the production. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, anyone else? Okay, who is this ice? Professor. Yeah. Yeah. As you were saying, the person who is doing the packing uh, we are uh, using as an indirect uh, material, including in the product cost. But uh, it should not come in, uh, I think uh, it should include it in the period cost also. Yeah, so you are saying the packaging is not a product cost, it's a period cost? Like, yes. Okay, yeah. So. So for example, right, is packaging necessary for the product, right? So basically, okay. uh, you know, in that case, it seems like it's necessary, right? So the packaging to uh, package that whole cheese. So if that's part of the product, the packaging is necessary, essential. Uh, so maybe I'll give you another example. Think about the TV, right? Like if you manufacturing the, those big, right? The, the big LED TV, right? So you, you, need to, you need to use all the foams to package it well, right? So then, you know, it's safe for the product to be uh, transferred, right? To be moved around, right? So would you consider that packaging as part of the product cost? I'm a bit confused in this. 
Okay, yeah, I understand what you are trying to say. You are saying that, you know, this, this things is not a part of TV, right? So basically that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, uh, uh, according yeah. to me, once the product is finished, the, uh, the next steps were included in the period costs. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's really depending on the situation. Yeah, so um, it could be, so if you think that these materials or this packaging is not essential to the product, so therefore this is not a product cost. But if it, it is essential for the, to the product, then it is part of the product cost. I think different companies, they may uh, treat it differently, okay? So okay. sometimes it's, it's probably not, it's not a clear cut, right? So just think about that product, right? The TV, right? How are you gonna shape it with all that packaging, right? So, okay, and I still have two hands up. Go ahead, if you have your hands up. Uh, quick question, uh, because salt is part of uh, cheese, would that be a direct material or would it not? Okay, that's a good question. So they probably use the salt, right? Okay, so is that a direct material or indirect material? How, how you guys think about it? Would you base it off of the cost? So it's if you best. just added like a sprinkle, it wouldn't it'd be indirect. And if you use a lot or expense, it'd be uh, direct. Mm -hmm. So in the video, we saw that, right? So sh she was, like sprinkle some kind of materials. I don't know what they are, ingredients, right? And you can see that big tank of the milk, right? So uh, in my observation, that amount of salt is not significant. I don't, I, and for me, I don't want to eat cheese with a lot of salt probably, right? So, uh, so think about the, each piece of cheese you eat, how many of the weight would be from the salt, right? So if you consider that insignificant, then it will be indirect material, right? So the milk, that will be the direct material, right? We all agree with that. Yes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's labor, labor intensive. So that um, the lady, they are working there. So they are the direct labor. And uh, manufacturing overhead, right? Well, they have a factory, right? They probably pay rent, right? Um, they probably have machines, right? They definitely have machines to, uh, in the very end of the video, right? They, are, they, are, they use the machines. Um, so yeah, so those things are directly related to the product, right? To, they are essential to making the product. So they are product cost, but the fact that they are not a direct material, they are not direct labor, therefore they are classified as manufacturing overhead. Anyone else have any questions so far? Sorry, so a direct material is just going to be like the main ingredient that is going into the product. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else have any question? I have a question. Um, we're talking about like the amount that we put in, um, but what about if it's like a really small company like do you ever take into consideration the size of the company so uh, it's i think it's relative so when we are saying uh, the indirect material versus the direct material um you know the direct material are the main right the main materials right like the when you have a, a finished product you can directly trace right this is the main material but for the indirect materials that they are uh, insignificant Okay, and sometimes it's not easy to physically trace this indirect materials to each product, right? So for example, if you coloring those Legos, right? Okay, you color the Legos because the ABS materials, they are clear, right? They are transparent. You, you have to dye these colors, right? So then the question would be, okay, so how much the color, right, would cost for that piece of the Lego, right? Would you consider that as a direct material, the color cost or indirect materials, right? So when we found it's really difficult to trace that materials to the product, that's 
indirect materials. Okay, so often if the amount you used is relatively small, right? So, so in that case, um, that will be considered as an indirect material. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So you're saying like, regardless of whether it's a small company or a big company, it's, it's how much you can physically trace back to it. Yeah, like, we're talking about the product. We're not talking about the size of a corporation. We're talking about the product, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wasn't sure if it had an impact because like if I'm a really small business and one big of salt is like more significant than if I'm a billion dollar company using like tons of bigs, I just wasn't sure if that sometimes has an impact. Oh, so basically it's really about the product, right? So if you are a big corporation, you are making, let's say a million product uh, every day, right? If you are a small corporation, you are making the same product. You only make 10, right? doesn't matter. Um, so as long as we are speaking the product, right? As long as that materials used for the product, that is insignificant and cannot be easily traced. So we would call that indirect materials. So that would be manufacturing overhead, not direct materials. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. I got a question. Okay. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Um, just thinking about this salt business. So it seems like there would be a place for management to, you know, it would just be a difference of circumstances. Um, like in this case, salt is extremely measurable because they're going to be measuring very specifically the, the weight per um, volume, let's say. And you know, based on the ideas of the management in the company, they're going to decide whether or not this is worth tracking or whether this is significant. And I'm just thinking about for future problems, if we run into a similar um, similar problem in a, in, a, in a question here on an assignment or whatever, is there room for um, differences in judgment calls on something like tracking salt exactly because yeah. one of us is going to say instantly that while well, it's a it's a trackable material and it's direct and someone else is going to say well it's kind of insignificant so is that a yes or is that a you know right or wrong well, so yeah. much so i'm i'm definitely hope that in the exams right we will have some uh, questions that is pretty clear right one way or the other um but that's a very good point, right? Uh, even maybe different companies, right? Depending on how they make the decisions, right? Um, so, so basically the idea is we know, we agree that the salt are product cost, right? It's part of the product, it's a product cost. So it's, it's really about how to, how to categorize, how to, sorry, how to categorize it, right? Is that a direct material or it's indirect material that is a manufacturing overhead, right? Like you said, right? Sometimes we know the ratio Right? We know the ratio and how many volumes, how many weight of the cheese, how many salt, right? I can easily maybe do a calculation, right? For uh, each product, we know the weight, right? On average, how many salt will be there, right? But you made a very good point that you said that, um, is that really worthy of it, right? Does that really worth of the management uh, to make that a different differentiation, right? It could be insignificant, right? Like maybe the other part of the cost maybe it's like 20 times more than, uh, or maybe like 30 times more than the salt, right? So maybe in that case, they will consider that as indirect materials. But in the exam, I will try to make it uh, pretty clear. I will try my best to make it clear. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. So anybody else have a question? No, okay. So uh, it's fun to watch videos, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and you learn something about it. Okay, so I will keep going. Okay, just give me a second. So. Okay, so, uh, so that's a cheese. Okay, so the nice question a manager may want to ask, right? So the manager wants to know, okay, I'm making this. It's important for the managers to know how much cost, right, the product. And the manager sometimes may consider to increase the production, 
right? If there's good demand, right, in the market, you know, the sales is up, right? He need to keep up with the demand. So he, therefore he has to increase the production level. So the question is, if the volume changes, production volume changes, how will the cost change, right? How will the cost change? So in that legal situation, okay? So they have this uh, uh, factory, right? The factory is there, okay? And let's say the rent is $10,000, okay? And let's say that uh, that manufacturer factory is not, uh, um, is not saturated. That means they are not working at 100% capacity. Let's say they are only working at 50% of the capacity, okay? So they have room to making more more product, right? So now every day they are making, let's say uh, 10,000 pieces, right? And the capacity is that they can make 20,000, okay? So now if they are increased from 10,000 to 15,000, well, it's still under 20,000, okay? The product, production capacity. Do you think that rent, the factory rent will change? No. No. no, no, right? So you are you are still using the same location, the same factories, you are paying the same amount of rent, right? Even though you increase your production level from 10,000 to 15,000, right? But because that factory has that working capacity, so therefore you don't need, you don't need a new, uh, new location, right? So therefore with the same amount of rent of the factory, you are able to change the volume. So see, that's interesting, right? So in that case, we know, oh, even I increase my volume, the cost will not change, right? But what about the materials? If I increase from 10,000 10, to 15,000, how do you think the materials of the direct materials? Uh, Michaela, Michaela? Increase. Oh, um, increase, right? Yeah, increase. Yeah. So that would be a variable cost, correct? Yes, yeah. So I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, so that's one important question, right? Like the manager wants to think because business is dynamic, right? It's not like you have to always maintain the same level of production, right? You, you have to increase, decrease, right? Depending on the economy, the market analysis, right? And then you, one of the things you want to know if there's a changes on this, how, the other, how my cost is gonna change. Uh, will automation impact costs? So you think about having uh, hundreds of people land up to make it, to install that Lego figure, right? You see that, right? The, uh, the leg, the body, the head, the cap, the arms, right? You imagine you, you have a hundred people land up there and to install that figure, okay? <laughs> and versus the machines do it, right? So will automation impact the costs, right? Maybe you want to analyze what's my direct labor cost, right? To do that. And what's the cost of the machinery, right? Using machinery robots, right? So the idea is if the volume is high, automation is al almost always a, a good solution, right? And then the question about that uh, cheese situation, right? And that the lady interviewed, she keeps saying that it's labor intensive, okay? So then, how come the manager is not considering automation? How come the manager cannot use a machine to do all this work, right? Maybe it's too expensive for having the machine. It does not justify for the uh, reduction of the direct labor cost, right? Maybe it's cheaper to use a human being to do the work, right? So automation, definitely, we need to keep that. And sometimes, um, if you have product or service are not successful, you want to discontinue it, right? Other times you are thinking, should I have a new product or new service, right? Uh, if you are a restaurant, right? <laughs> you know, one of the decisions a manager will make, should I come up with a new dish, right? Or maybe an existing dish is not very popular, should I discontinue the serving of that dish, right? So this is an interesting example. So Lego is not always very uh, successful. Uh, I think in the early 2000s, Lego is almost bankrupted, okay? <laughs> so uh, this is a design 
Lego product in the 1996. It's the Lego Technic Fiber Optic Moto Sight. So this one, <laughs> so this product are clear plastic tubes that connect to battery operated LED light pack. This specialized parts cost more to produce than the entire site was being sold, okay? So they are losing money by having this product, okay? So they probably didn't do a good job to know the cost, okay? Because later on they, they figured out this is clearly a failure, okay? This product is clearly a failure. Okay, so maybe you need to discontinue this product, okay? Okay, so first, as to answer this question, manager must be familiar with what is the cost object and the various types of cost of the, uh, the cost object. Okay, go back to that Lego uh, situation. What is the cost object we are talking about for the Lego example? Would it be uh, like a head or a body or any particular finished product that has costs that can be related to it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. And what about for the, for the uh, cheese example? What's the cost object? So that'll be the cheese, right? That's the product, that's the cheese. And so then we want to know what's the various types of the cost uh, object, okay? So we talked about the so far product, right? Sometimes we also, some business is offer product, other business is provide a service, right? For example, I'm a CPA, I'm an accountant. So if I help my client to prepare tax returns, right? That's a service. So I offer the service. So then the cost object would be the service I'm, I'm providing. That's preparing the uh, tax return. Right, tax return. And there's no direct materials, right? It's mainly my labor, right? Mainly it's my labor as a professional. Okay, so what's the product cost? Product costs are those costs incurred because the manufacturing manufactured that cost objects. What's the period cost? Period cost are the cost incurred because the company is in business. Okay. So what are the product costs? Okay are the costs associated with the manufacturing of the product, okay? What are the, what's the period cost? Period costs are those costs that are not product cost, right? But is the cost essential to the business? This is, this gentleman is the CEO of the Lego group, okay? Uh, so basically he joined the company in October, 2017. In 2020, this CEO and the board of directors together was paid $10 million Canadian dollars. So the Lego group company paid this CEO and the board directors together $10 million Canadian dollars. So my question is, is this a product cost or period cost? Period cost. Period cost, right? Why? Administrative, ex administrative expenses. Yeah, so why this is a period cost? Because I think it is, it is not directly associated with the cost object, object cost. It's associated with a specific time frame. So you're saying that in 2020, they were paid $10 million. So that's for that year. Yeah. So for that year, the company will have product cost and the period cost, right? So does the pay, the salary to the CEO and the other board directors, uh, period cost for the year or the product cost for the year? So it would be Wouldn't it just be a period cost because it has nothing to do with the actual manufacturing? Okay, very good. So we didn't see this guy working on the front line, right? He is not assembling these Lego pieces, right? He has more important jobs to do, right? So he is not a production worker, right? So the salary paid to the, the main people, those are period costs because he's not directly involved in the production, right? So therefore the salary paid to him are period costs. Does that make sense? Uh, professor? 
Yeah. I wonder if we could, because this one really got me. I, I had to think about it a little bit. So I was wondering, is it okay to see period cost as the non-manufacturing cost? Yeah. Is that, yeah. would that be a way to look at it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way okay. to look at it. Yeah. Okay. Because it was, it was quite, it was like, I didn't get it for yeah. a while. So, so if it's not a manufacturing cost, then it's a period cost. Beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so what about this guy? This is the Lego senior designer, Justin, okay? Um, so on average, the, uh, the pay is $50,000 a year to the Lego designer, okay? On average, that's how much they were paid. So is this cost a product cost or period cost? Would it still technically be a period cost because it's not devolved, like directly related to the product being creative? It's just him designing the product to go into manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So that's a very good point. Okay. Because he's not directly, um, he's probably just uh, play around with ideas, right? So, um, if his ideas is adopted, okay, do you think his design is part of the product? Do you think? Yeah, it's what I'm wondering yeah. too. I'm like, cause I'm yeah. thinking um, if he, if he doesn't design the product, right? How then do we manufacture it? I think yeah. it's an integral part of the yeah. manufacturing process. So it's a little tricky, I think. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, uh, the student was asking a very good question. I agree with you, Lenny, you are right. So, you know, we needed that, the product design, right? In order to make the product, right? Uh, but I think that the, the student raised a very good point, right? Uh, maybe he's one of the research team, right? So, you, you know, in the team that people are trying to play around with different ideas, right? But not all the ideas are successful, right? So not all the ideas they have eventually will be developed into a, a product, right? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So in that case, this is more like a kind of a research type of cost, right? Um, so in that case, in yeah, that case, that makes a lot of sense. yeah, in that case, this may be considered as a period cost, right? Uh, but if it's a design, okay, and it was used, adopted, right? And then that design should be part of the product cost, right? Okay, and uh, who else is having the question? Jamie, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just to clarify then, so the materials that he used to design the product would be of course included, but his salary would not, whether or not the design was adopted regardless of that. Um, so I guess it's kind of, uh, so what I was trying to say is, um, if suppose that um, he was paid to come up with the design and the design is used to make the product, then the payment to him for that design is necessary to that product because you had to follow that design to make that eventual product, right? So in this case, that cost paid to him would be considered as a um, as a, a product cost. But if he's just in a team, right, every day he was given, he was paid just to play around of ideas, no commitment to a full product. So in that case, right, um, his cost is not directly associated with a product, right? There's a potential, but it's not, it's not um, clearly directly uh, related to a product. He, he's doing the research. He has the potential, right? So in that case, that would be a period of cost, right? Okay, so I think that makes perfect sense. Unless you're told that it's specifically yeah. used in the design, then you would count it as a period cost. Yeah, so the whole point is, is this cost directly related to a product? If the answer is yes, then it's a product, right? Yeah. James? James? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, so what if he comes up with 10 ideas in the year and five of them get adopted and made into products? So how do you, like, how does that even work when you break up his, his salary? Yeah. Like, is That's he a, just part of the product team? Like yeah. that, 
you know, and the whole product team, their salaries are put under product costs. Yeah, overhead, right? Indirect overhead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's, yeah, that's a very good point. So to me, if they have a high success rate, I would consider all the expenses as a product cost, right? But if they don't have a high high success rate, only one percent, I would consider them as a period cost. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's not a, a black and white, right? And uh, this is just the information for the manager. It will not be used by the public, right? So the manager definitely have a discretion to decide how they're gonna allocate this cost. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, so in that case, um, if it's fifty percent, that's a very high success rate. So, I to me, I would just include that as part of the product cost. Does okay, that help? so it's a judgment call again. Yeah, but does that help? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, so move on. So manufacturing, three types of manufacturing cost, direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. Okay, uh, what's the direct materials? Are the raw materials that are physically, directly, and easily associated with the finished product, okay? So you can see the bride, right? What's the, what's the direct material? Well, the flower. Well, this is a car, right? What is the direct material? Well, the steel, right? You can touch it, you can even touch it, steal it, right? Um, for direct labor, okay, uh, this cheese worker, right? He's directly working on the cheese, right? Converting the milk to a cheese. So his job is to convert the raw materials into a finished product. So this is a direct labor, right? And uh, this is the CPA. Oh, he's doing, he's providing a service, okay? Um, so then he's, so his direct her hours spent on that case, right? Let's say two hours, $200 per hour, together $400 direct labor to that tax return, right? Uh, manufacturing overhead, these are the costs okay, incurred in the manufacturing of finished good cannot be physically traced to a specific unit, okay? There are indirect materials, indirect labor, depreciation on the factory buildings, okay? So we, we talked about in the Lego pieces example, uh, the, the paint, right? Those are the indirect materials. And uh, the, the workers maintaining the machines, those are indirect laborers. And the machines uh, depreciation, those are the depreciations, right? So those are all overhead, okay? Uh, indirect materials may not physically become part of the finished product, Okay, you probably cannot see it, right? Um, oh, maybe it's too insignificant. So if you apply, if you apply the lubricant to the chains of the bike, right? So that would be considered as indirect material because you cannot see it. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it's too insignificant, okay? Um, okay, and the manufacturing overhead, you have this, picture showing that that two uh, people are working and you have a supervisor here, okay? Uh, making sure that they are doing the right things, right? And then these are the production workers. They are the indirect, they are the direct labor. But this guy with the yellow helmet, he's not working. He's not, he's not, he's not working on the product. He's supervising that production team, right? So, and it's important without the supervisor, everyone start, start looking at their cell phone, right? They are not working. So it's important to have this uh, supervisor here. Uh, so therefore this labor, the salary you paid to the uh, supervisor, that's a uh, indirect labor, right? So um, we are talking about the two concept, prime cost, okay? So we know the three types of manufacturing cost, the direct material, direct labor. So these two together, we call them prime cost. So the prime cost has this word direct, okay? Direct material plus direct labor. This is the prime cost. And if you use direct labor and the manufacturing overhead together, this is the conversion cost, okay? This is called the conversion cost. So this is the cost you convert the direct materials 
to the final product. Okay, does that make sense? So three types of manufacturing cost. The first two are direct. These are the prime cost. Okay, the direct labor and manufacturing overhead, they are conversion cost because these two convert the direct materials to finish, finish goods. So therefore we call them conversion cost. Why do I pick a direct labor in a purple color? Does anyone know? So the direct material is blue, red, prime cost are red, and uh, this conversion cost are blue. Why I pick the direct labor as a purple? Aaron? I think yes. it's because if you mix blue and red, it's okay. purple, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, because direct labor is part of both, right? It's part of the red, the prime cost, is also part of the conversion, right? So therefore, um, direct labor is belongs to both, okay? So it feels like a liberal conservative, okay? And uh, purple means that in a election uh, zone that it's too close, right? Is that, is that, is that right? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, let's review. We still have a few minutes. Which of the following is not an element of manufacturing overhead? A, sales manager's salary. B, plant manager's salary. C, factory repairment wages. Product inspector's salary. Which of the one is not a manufacturing overhead? A. A, very good. Good job, guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, two, the following labor costs have been incurred by uh, this company. Of this amount, how much would be considered as a product cost? Direct labor and indirect labor, supervisory salary, plant. This is all related to the plant. Sales commissions, sales salaries. So how much would be considered as a product cost? Should we Which one? B. B. B, yeah, B. B? Yeah. Hold on, no. I think C. C? I think C. C? C, C. so 80. Okay, C. how many think it's C. C? How many think it's C? Raise your hand. How many I... think it's a C? Okay, C is correct. Yeah, C is correct. Um, so um, the plant, that's the uh, production. Um, location, right? So direct labor, this one, no question. Indirect labor, this two. Supervisory salary. And this supervisor is working in the plant, right? So he's part of the production. So therefore you sum up these three. Uh, these two together, that's gonna be 170. And plus 310, that's 480. Yeah. Aldwell, do you have a question, Aldwell? No, I don't. Okay, that's fine. Let me, you have a question? No, Professor, thank you. I just raised my hand okay. when you asked him sure. who wanted to. Yeah. Um, so, oh, sorry. Product versus period cost. So the product cost, these ones uh, first will be in the inventory, okay? So you have raw materials inventory. Uh, you have working in progress inventory. You have finished goods inventory. So all these product costs will be captured in the inventory on your balance sheet, okay? Until you sold the inventory, it will be part of your cost of goods sold. And you learn this in 2100. For the period cost, okay? These ones will be in the income statement as the expenses, okay? That's the difference uh, from the product versus period cost from the financial st statement perspective, okay? Product cost will be stay on the balance sheet as inventory until they were sold and that portion will become cost goods sold. Period cost, they will be in the income statement as expenses. How, how are we doing? We still have five minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. The following costs have been incurred by the company how much would be considered as period cost? 
direct material 60, direct manufacturing labor, manufacturing overhead, sales commission, and the main stretch of salary. So $20. $20. Anyone disagree? Yes. No. No? OK, good. No, no, I don't. Yeah, sales commission and the main street of salaries, right? This, these two are the period cost because the other three are all product cost. So 20 is correct. Okay, we still have time to do this. This is the, uh, the uh, exercise 2.2 on page 2-34. Indicate which one of the, each of the following costs of automobile mm -hmm. manufacturer would be classified as direct materials, direct labor or manufacturing overhead. So we are talking about the car, right? That's the cost object, right? What's the cost object? The car. The wind shield, what is this? Direct, direct material. material. Direct material. Okay, yeah. engine. Direct, direct material. material. Direct, direct, direct material. material, yeah. Very good. Wages of assembly line workers. Yeah. Direct, 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 direct labor. 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 Labor, yes. Depreciation of factory machinery. Manufacturing. Manufacturing, Manufacturing overhead. overhead. Very good. Factory ma machinery lubricants. Indirect labels of manufacturing overhead. Well, good job. <laughs> Very good job. <laughs> Hires. Hires. Direct, Direct material. material. Uh, steering wheel. Direct, Direct material. material. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salary of painting supervisor. Manufacturing. Manufacturing, Manufacturing overhead. overhead. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. So next question. Next is about the cost behavior. Uh, I have three minutes left. So I'm going to leave it here uh, until Thursday, okay? Uh, so we will continue talking about cost of behavior. So if you have any question, please stay. Otherwise, class is dismissed.